Hello, my name is Dr. Omide, and I'm going to discuss the histology of the liver in this lecture series. So, um, straight away, we'll begin with the liver. So, it's the largest glandular tissue in the body, and also the largest internal organ in the body. And remember, um, it receives blood from the hepatic portal vein, as well as from the hepatic arteries. So, blood from hepatic portal vein is uh, venous blood from the hollow GI as well as the pancreas and the spleen because the portal vein is formed by the union of the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. And um, in the inferior mesenteric uh, vein is a tributary of the splenic vein. So splenic vein joins superior mesenteric vein behind the neck of the pancreas to form the portal vein. So, um, this is the right lobe of the liver, this is the left lobe, and this is your falciform ligament. What are the functions of the liver? Synthesis of plasma proteins such as albumin and fibrinogen. So plasma proteins are synthesized in the liver. The liver also synthesizes cholesterol and it helps with the metabolism of lipid-soluble drugs and metabolism of steroids. Metabolism of fat is also carried out in the liver and the liver stores glycogen and releases gly uh, glycogen by uh, glycogenolysis or uh, gluconeogenesis. The hepatocytes in the liver secrete bile. So those are the six major functions of the liver. Now, bile has, uh, is secreted by the hepatocytes and this bile usually contains conjugated and degraded um, waste products. So the conjugated and degraded waste products will be secreted back to the intestine and this will help with emulsification of fat so that's the main function of bile to emulsify fat so from the uh, hepatocytes that produce this bile you have canaliculi and the ducts that eventually form um, the common bile ducts that will drain the bile into the uh, posterior medial part um, of the second part of the duodenum so um, what are the histological features of the liver? So the liver is made up of hepatic lobules, which are hexagonal in shape. And these hexagonal hepatic lobules are separated by septa. Remember, you have a glycens capsule of the liver. So it's a capsule of the liver, we call it glycens capsule. It sends in septa that divides the liver into lobules. And these um, lobules are hexagonal and they contain a central vein at the center. The hepatocytes usually radiate from this central vein. In this rays of hepatocytes, in between the rays of hepatocytes radiating from the central vein, we have sinusoids. Sinusoids are endothelial lined channels that are separated from the hepatocytes by what you call the perisinusoidal space of this. Hepatocytes secrete bile and this bile is transported in the um, bile canaliculi and the canaliculi converge at the periphery of each lobule into portal areas as bile ducts and then the bile ducts of one lobe will form a right hepatic duct and the other one will form the left hepatic duct so from the hepatocyte to biliary canaliculi to bile ducts which are at the uh, periphery of each lobule and this will unite eventually to form bile ducts. So the connective tissue within the, the periphery of these hexagonal hepatic lobules contains portal triad. And remember portal triad, you have hepatic artery, a branch of hepatic portal vein, and the bile duct. So the corners of this hexagonal hepatic lobule contains the portal triad made up of hepatic portal vein, hepatic artery, and the bile duct. The bile ducts uh, drain into hepatic ducts and other cells that are present in the liver. We have the phagocytes, which you call the Kufa cells. These are the members of the monocytic phagocytic system and they have an immune role. So this is what we are discussing. This generally is the hepatic lobule with a central vein at the center and you can appreciate hepatocytes radiating from the central vein. So they sort of look like they're diverging from the central 
vein at the center so you can appreciate and in between these rays of hepatocytes we have endothelial lined um, spaces which you call sinusoids and these sinusoids are separated from the hepatocytes by what you call the space of this okay so these are sinusoids they are usually separated from hepatocytes by space of this so these are the rays of hepatocytes radiating from a central vein and the corners of this lobule you have connective tissue that houses the portal triad made up of the portal vein which is the largest then there's a branch of hepatic artery with that thick the thickest um wall and then you have your bile duct with a the sort of simple um, cuboidal epithelium so basically this is the histology of um the, the liver remember the liver also contains other cells such as the kufa cells members of monocytic phagocytic system which help with the immune role the, look at the sinusoids in between the uh, rays of hepatocytes so you can be asked to list the cells found in the liver so we have hepatocytes you have uh, endothelial cells that are lining the sinusoids lining the sinusoids and then you also have the kufa um, cells again we said the hepatocytes are the ones that produce bile and this bile is drained into biliary can bile canaliculi before the bile canaliculi eventually converge at the terminal uh, periphery of the lobule to form bile ducts these are sinusoids these are hepatic uh, rays of hepatocytes radiating from the central vein and you have biliary canalicula that pick up the bile that the hepatocyte has uh, produced these are kufa cells and endothelial cells lining the sinusoids are there so this basically um, is the how the hepatocytes are arranged and remember we've said hepatocytes usually produce um synthesize proteins okay they help with detoxification they help with um production of steroids and uh, metabolism of steroids and cholesterol so they will basically have features of protein synthesizing cells such as prominent nuclei nucleoli abundant ribosomes rough endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus so the hepatocytes have features of a protein synthesizing cell they'll have features of a steroid synthesizing cell where you have an ovoid smooth endoplasmic reticulum abundant um, cytoplasmic vacuoles and so on and so forth so um you can appreciate the sinusoids here these are hepatocytes you can see how they are radiating outwards this is the central vein so if, when you make, do a cross section of this portion of the liver this is what you see what you've described but you need to understand that there's a central vein and hepatocytes are radiating from the central vein but in between the rays of the hepatocytes what do we have sinusoids you can see sinusoids yeah so sinusoids and then you see the biliary canaliculi so the biliary canaliculi pick up bile from the hepatocyte then they unite to form your bile duct look at the portal triad within the connective tissue around the hepatic lobule so you have the the portal vein the bile duct and the hepatic artery and each of them they give branches to all sides of the hepatic lobule okay this just shows you the same thing we've described these are the biliary canaliculi hepatocytes radiating from the central vein and look at the portal triad portal vein bile duct and hepatic artery then in between the hepatic rays you have the um, kufa cells here and the presence of sinusoids so this just shows you the connective tissue stroma is made up of reticular fibers so reticular fibers are abundant in the liver and they form the connective tissue stroma again the central vein with hepatocytes radiating away from the central vein then the presence of at the edges of the the hepatic lobule you have the portal triad made up of portal vein hepatic artery with a thick wall portal vein with the largest diameter and the branch of bile ducts and the presence of reticular fibers as the commonest uh, connective tissue so we have three functional units of the liver there's a classic lobule portal lobule and portal assigner so when you're asked to describe histology of the liver you must remember to discuss this uh, functional units classic lobule portal lobule and portal assigners so what's the difference the classic lobule is actually the hexagonal block of tissue that we have discussed so you can see a central vein 
with hepatocytes radiating out of the central vein, and the six corners of the hexagon, the connective tissue harbors the portal triad. Okay, the portal vein, bile duct, and hepatic artery on all the six parts. So this is the classic lobule. So the classic, uh, in the classic lobule, why do you need to understand it? Because the sinusoids drain to the central vein. So all sinusoids are bringing blood to the central vein. And because um, you have anastomosing plates of hepatic cells that are separated by anastomosing system of the sinusoids. So from the portal vein, blood passes through the sinusoids into the central vein. And you have portal triad in all the six corners. So blood will now converge towards the central vein, passing through the sinusoids, which are in between the hepatocytes, uh, rays of hepatocytes that are radiating from the uh, central vein. Then um, we have the, you can see at the angles of the hexagon, you have the portal triad and blood is flowing from the portal vein through the sinusoids into the central vein. Then the classic model or, uh, or the, um, this classic lobule discuss, uh, describes the flow of blood through the hepatic sinusoids into the central vein. So we got, that was a classic lobule. Number two is the portal lobule. So the portal lobule mainly emphasizes exocrine function of the liver. Classical lobule emphasized how blood moves from petal vein into the uh, inwards into the central vein. Portal lobule emphasizes the exocrine function of the liver. And what's the exocrine function of the liver? Bile production. Okay. So how is this bile produced? The hepatocytes will produce bile and the biliary canaliculi now come and drain into the bile duct that is at the uh, um, connective tissue stroma. So this classic lobule has biliary canalicula that will drain here. This classic lobule will drain here. This classic lobule of hexagon will drain here. So when you join the three central veins, this triangle that you have formed with bile converging from the biliary canalicula into the bile duct, that is what you call the portal lobule. Classical lobule was converging in the hexagon via sinusoids, blood gets into the central vein. That's classical lobule. But portal lobule is biliary canaliculi from three classical lobules converging and draining the bile to a central bile duct. So this triangle that we have formed is what you call the portal lobule. So it defines a triangular block of tissue that has three classic lobules and they secrete bile into an axial bile duct. So that's it, the direction of uh, bile secretion. Then the last one is the portal sinus. Okay, so portal sinus describes uh, perfusion based on metabolic, uh, uh, it describes blood perfusion and also metabolic activity as well as liver pathology. So what do we mean? In the portal sinus, remember this is your classical lobule, this is your portal lobule, and this is your portal sinus. So what happens? If you're carrying, uh, somebody has ingested some poison or over uh, ingested paracetamol, for example. So from the GI through the portal vein, blood comes to the liver. So through the branches of portal veins are located here. So this first portion here, this portion will get high toxicity. By the time the blood gets to the central vein, this portion of the liver gets low toxicity. So the first uh, peripheral portions will get high toxicity compared to the portions away towards the central vein. Another example is blood from the portal vein is carrying nutrition from GIT. So the first portions will get high nutrients compared to the portions near the central vein. So the central, these portions here get high nutrition compared to the last one. They get high um, oxygen, uh, sorry, high nutrition, but they are the first ones to get intoxicated compared to this portion. So tissue supplied by terminal branches of hepatic artery and portal vein form the portal sinus. So what do we mean? If you're carrying oxygen from hepatic artery, these portions are well oxygenated compared to this. So you tend to supply the periphery before the cells towards the central sinus. So cells nearest the vessels 
first receive oxygen and nutrients. Okay.